Hello and welcome to this presentation on Jacobs University. My name is Matthew and I will be your presenter today. I'm actually a recruitment counselor here at Jacobs. Welcome to this presentation. I'm going to talk about the following items today. First of all, why Jacobs University? The characteristics that make our institution unique and special. I'm going to talk about our campus. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the city in which we're located, uh, Bremen, Germany. Then moving on to Jacobs in facts and figures, I'm going to talk a little bit about our program and the way our curriculum is structured. Then we'll move on to career services and study abroad opportunities, student accommodation and campus life. And finally, we will end today's presentation with the application process requirements, as well as fees and financing information. So if uh, you want to jump forward in this presentation to move on to a, a particular topic which you feel is more relevant to you personally, feel free to do so. Otherwise, you can just follow along. So why Jacobs University? First of all, uh, we are a private English-speaking campus university in Bremen that is committed to excellence in innovation in research, teaching, and knowledge transfer. Um, we offer academic excellence with a global perspective uh, with innovative advanced training programs following an interdisciplinary concept. We pride ourselves very much in being Germany's foremost international university with students from over 120 different countries. In fact, the vast majority of our university students are not from Germany. So upwards around 80% of our students are not from Germany. They're coming from abroad. And so as you can imagine, this creates a very unique atmosphere on campus. Interdisciplinary problem solving is something that we, we stress. We like our students to have a, a broad range of study options available to them when they're, when they're on campus, especially in the first year, which I'll get into when I talk about the curriculum. We offer early research opportunities to students. So many of our undergraduate degree courses are research-based, meaning that a lot of the courses will take place in a laboratory environment. Students have access to these facilities, which are modern and state-of-the-art, um, from the moment they arrive on campus. So there's no uh, sort of trial period in which they have to do a lot of theoretical work in a classroom before they're allowed into the lab. They're already allowed into the lab from the very moment they arrive on campus. And this is something the students very much appreciate. As a result of our size, which is relatively small with about 1500 students, uh, the student to teacher ratio is also quite small. This is something that the students love because when you compare it to a big public university, it's always nice to really get to know your professors and have them get to know you and to work closely with you throughout your academic career. Because of the fact that so many of uh, the students come from all over the world, this creates a very vibrant campus life. We also have student-focused services, such as student life services, one-on-one -on -one academic advising, as well as internship and very good study abroad opportunities. But first, I'm going to talk about our campus a little bit. As you can see from this photo, we have a big, beautiful green campus, which is about 80 acres in size. One way to describe it would be that it is a city within a city. Everything you could want and need is on campus within a short walking distance. And as I said before, the students actually live on campus in one of our four residential colleges. So in addition to their residential colleges, you have their classrooms, laboratories. You can see here at the bottom of the screen, this green building right here, that's this, the library. We also have fitness centers on campus, student life facilities, an interfaith house, there's a cinema slash theater, there's a music studio, there's cafes, even a student run bar, among others, all within a short walking distance. So it is really a, a beautiful place to be a student. The campus itself is located in the city of Bremen, Germany. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Bremen is in the northwest of Germany, about an hour and a half southwest of Hamburg and about three to three and a half hours west of Berlin. You can see the map down here showing the precise location of Bremen. It is a city of about 600,000 people. It's very, very quaint and beautiful. This is a picture of the central Marktplatz, the central square and the old historic part of the city. And this area is about uh, 15 minutes from our campus by train. 
but Bremen itself is very beautiful. It's actually a, very much a student city. There's around 30,000 students that live in Bremen. So the cultural offerings and the nightlife are always very good. If you want to get out and explore Bremen, uh, we're quite lucky to be connected by public transport to other cities in Germany and elsewhere in Europe. And the airport is actually one of the closest airports to any German city center. It's about 15 minutes away by tram and you can reach a wide array of international and European destinations as well. So it is a very, very safe and beautiful city. And it's, a, again, a wonderful place to be a student. So some more facts and figures for you. As I mentioned, we're about 1,500 students from 124 different nationalities, 65 professors, and about 200 employees in research and education who are on campus every day. And the students live in one of four colleges on campus. And I'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about student accommodation later on in the presentation. So when we talk about interdisciplinary studies, what we really want our students to have access to are courses from the following three, what we call our focus areas, those being mobility, health, and diversity. With mobility, we want them to really have an understanding about the worldwide flow of goods and people in a globalized world. With health, uh, we want them to focus on, that focuses on bioactive substances, which make the world and the environment a, a healthier and a safer place. And by diversity, we mean uh, diversity, human rights, social cohesion, our driving forces behind development and progress. And we want our students to have a background in each of those areas. This is not to say that you won't have a specific focus area. And we offer the following study programs. These are our undergraduate majors split amongst the three uh, focus areas. As you can see, you may have noticed there are quite a lot of bachelor science programs, which are very research heavy. Um, but we do also offer a few bachelor of arts program, things like international business administration, international relations, global economics and management, etc. So your typical program structure and academic career at Jakobs will look like this as broken down by year. The first year we really much refer to it as the choice year because it's the year that you have the most flexibility. You can select variety of study programs, modules from different areas. At the end of that year, you, you can declare your major and even a possible minor combination from a different subject area as well. And that moves you into year two, which we refer to as core. And uh, your studies will get more discipline specific in your second year. And that will lead into your third year. Uh, there's a mandatory internship that will take place between the second and the third year. And we refer to the third year as career because now you are really getting towards the end of your studies and preparing to enter the job market. So a few rankings for you. We're very proud of our ranking as the number one private and international university in Germany, as well as number 10 among small universities worldwide and number 11 in teaching among young university rankings. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about our career service center and alumni office. So whichever university you end up applying to, it is very important that students look and see, investigate what the university will offer them in terms of career services. You want to see what the university does for its graduates, not only while they're there, but beyond the university once they enter the, the job market. Our Career Services Center actually has a fair that takes place every year that welcomes over a thousand participants and exhibitors from the following companies. They don't, don't need any introduction from me. You can, you can see that there's some of the big ones there as well as they welcome back alumni from each major and focus area. And they give presentations to current students to talk to them about their experience in the job market, um, setting up their own companies. And um, it's, it's obviously very beneficial in terms of networking. And uh, some companies even actually hire our students on the spot. In terms of our alumni, here are some statistics for you. About 90% found their job position within the first year. Uh, one in two obtained employment within three months of graduation. Employers really like our students because they acquire very useful skills um, at an international company such as intercultural awareness, 
flexibility and ability to adapt to change, autonomy and independence. And of those who find their first position, most of those took place, I think, within Europe. 71% found the first job in Europe and 44% of which stayed on in Germany. Here on this map, you can see where our graduates live. As I said before, they mostly um, stayed in Europe, but they're to be found all over the world. Here are some university partners that we work with uh, from all over the world. These are study abroad opportunities for our students. This usually takes place the latter stages of the second year or early into the third year, um, depending on the program, of course. But as you can see, there are a wide array of study abroad opportunities with some incredible institutions all over the world. Now moving on to student accommodation. So our students live on campus in one of four residence, residential colleges. And their names are Nordmetall, Coop, Mercator, and C3. Each of them has its very own distinct characteristics, uh, flavor. They have their own color, their own logo. And there's a little bit of a kind of a friendly competitive spirit between each college. If the campus itself is a city within a city, then the college would, one would consider that to be a city within a city within a city because the students, they live there. They, each college has its own canteen where the students typically uh, eat their three meals a day. Uh, there's also student lounges, common areas, and there's also kitchen facilities, as well as on-site uh, kind of residence advisors who are there to provide any sort of help or psychological support for students. Because we do realize for many of these students, they're leaving home for the first time. They're going quite far from, uh, from their families and friends. So we have staff and a support network on-site to help them with anything that they need. So when you move into one of these residential colleges, uh, you can expect the following. So if you see from the photo here, our students live in a single bedroom apartment, which is very nice, very spacious. And then they will share a bathroom and shower with one other student on the same sex. Um, and we have 24 hour security. It's safe and very comfortable. And as I mentioned before, each college has a common area, student lounges, on-site support, as well as the, the canteen or what is known here on campus as a servery. And that's where the students will eat their three meals a day. We also offer a very lively and vibrant campus community when it comes to student life. There are over 60 clubs on campus with a great variety of student-driven events during the year. Here's a very extensive list for you. It's also worth mentioning that if there is a, a club or an activity or sport that the student wishes to do, which is not on offer by one of the clubs on campus, then they can also get uh, financial support and help from student life offices to go and start their own club and to, to start their own organization or put on an event. So this is something really unique. And as a result, campus life is very vibrant. So now we've moved into the application phase of the presentation. How does one, in fact, apply to Jacobs University? Um, it is important to note that all the applications to our university are done by something called the Common App. The Common App is basically an online application platform that's used especially um, in, among North American universities, but also various universities in Europe. It's sort of a standardized platform that allows students to apply to many universities at once, so you don't have to do several separate applications. You can do one and send them all off to various universities. So we're done entirely via the Common App. You can access this via our website or go directly to the Common App website. You'll be then asked to create a profile and you can then begin uploading um, and inputting your necessary personal information as well as the documents necessary for your application. Once all of the documents have been successfully uploaded and everything has been sent, uh, typically applicants will receive an admissions decision anywhere from two to four weeks. Alongside this admissions decision, you will also receive something called a merit-based scholarship decision. Now, what is this? When you apply to Jacobs University, it's important to note that you are then automatically put in contention for a merit-based scholarship. Now, these scholarships can range from 2,500 euros up to 15,000 euros. So they're quite generous and there's no 
uh, additional application that needs to be filled out in order to receive these scholarships. Like again, once you apply to the university, you're automatically considered for one of these scholarships and they're needs blind. So regardless of your socioeconomic background, you are in contention for this and it's entirely based upon your academic history and your academic performance. However, in addition, there is a financial aid application that you can fill out whilst you are applying to the university. And this is a needs-based type of scholarship. And these are also very generous, I can say. So there are students out there who have paid very little or hardly any tuition fees because they received a combination of needs-based and merit-based scholarships. And there's several other financing options, which I will get into shortly. If you then uh, accept the offer from the university, you can confirm your enrollment by paying a 500 euro enrollment deposit, and then it becomes official. You are accepted into the university and you have secured your place. You can then turn your focus towards orientation week, which is referred to as O-week as well, which takes place typically at the end of August. And uh, this is the week in which students arrive physically on campus. They are greeted by members of the admissions and the student life departments, and they're moved into the residence halls. And there's numerous events that take place during that week, which kind of help students acclimatize to university life and meet their fellow classmates. And then finally, uh, studies will start on the 1st of September. Now, what exactly are we looking for in terms of application requirements? These are the sort of things that you will have to upload and input on the Common App platform. So obviously your academic history uh, and official transcripts, it's usually the last three years of your high school. In addition, you might be asked to write a motivation essay. This could come in the form of detailing your motivation for applying to this particular university or this program as well as more personal questions, you know, describing an event in your life that was, um, you know, transformative, there was a problem that needed to be solved, how did you solve it, and these sort of questions. In addition, there's a letter of recommendation that's required, although it's always better to have two, I would say, maybe two or three, and these come from typically a teacher or counselor, but they can also come from a previous employer as well. We also employ here at Jacobs a very holistic approach to reading applications. So um, I have to stress that grades, while they are very important, they're not the most important thing and not the only thing that we look at here. We, we take all of these uh, factors into account, including extracurricular activities and how involved you are in your local community and in your school. Also, given that Jacobs is entirely taught in English, if you are a non-native speaker or did not go to a school whose language of instruction was English for at least six years, exclusively English, bilingual schools don't count, it's worth noting, um, then you would be asked to provide an English proficiency test in the form of either the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the Duolingo test. There's also a standardized test requirement in the form of the SAT or ACT or test AS. This can be waived there. It's done on a case by case basis. And it's based upon the type of high school degree that you are applying with. This is uh, for most people, they will be required to do a standardized test in the form of the ACT or the SAT. Now for fees and financing, the tuition per year is 20,000 euros room and board, which includes your housing and your three meals a day at the university canteen is 8,000 euros. It should be noted that health insurance as a student in Germany, as well as your books and personal expenses will be extra. So you must factor that in to the cost of attendance. However, despite tuition, as I said before, the university offers very generous merit-based scholarships. And the merit-based ones are the ones that you um, are in contention for immediately upon applying. In addition to that, we have need-based financial aid, which you can apply for separately. There's also a tuition deferral program called JU Study at Ease, which allows students in some cases to pay for their studies after they graduate and upon entering the job market. So as you can see, there's several different options which help students. And as I said before, 75% of our students receive some form of financial aid in the form of scholarships or uh, tuition deferral. 
So that concludes our presentation today. Um, I thank you very much for your attention. And please, if you have any other questions or feel that I didn't cover something as in depth as I could have, get in touch with us. Um, we have several recruiters on staff who love to talk to potential students and share their experiences here at the university with them. Um, we also have several web sessions on offer. So please look at the website. You can register and uh, meet some of our counselors as well as even fellow students. We very much look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much again.